Welcome back to Let's Play Persona, everybody. This is actually the first time I've recorded this without it being, like, late night insomnia. How about that? Um, if you're interested mainly in just plot progression, this is going to be one more video to skip, because I'm pretty much just going to go to the casino for this video, and also going to go into a couple little tutorial things. Not in-game tutorials, but just kind of observations I've made as a player. Finally. It took me long enough. Uh, if I get anything wrong, if there are any Persona veterans, you can feel free to correct me. I don't know if any veterans will be watching this, but hey. Persona veterans, that is. But anyway, uh, something I've noticed about the way leveling up and the battle system and all that works. So you've got your normal level and you've got your Persona level. As far as I've noticed, there isn't much that affects how much, uh, like, experience goes to just your regular level, as opposed to how much goes to your Persona level. It seemed pretty balanced to me. However, there is sort of an MVP system in, wor in play where uh, whoever contributes the most to a battle gets the most experience, so depending on what you're having your characters do and how well they stay alive, how well they actually contribute to the battle, they'll get different amounts of experience. So you could have everyone gave a, gain a pretty equal amount, or you could, say, have almost everyone gain almost no experience, whereas uh, just one character gains, like, the majority of experience. It all depends. One thing that is affected di more directly by your actions in battle is that it seems to me that Persona rank does not increase unless you use magic or the Persona skills. So it is important to use those fairly often if you want your Persona rank to go up, which is important if you want to get new magic spells or skills, which you definitely want to happen. That was actually one of the main important things I was going for in uh, doing some leveling up off-screen. So that's uh, how experience in, in battle works, as far as I can tell. Another thing I figured out was the sort of ideal way to fuse personas, or just the easiest way. Manual fusion is obviously the optimal way to go about it, but, well, as Igor said, it can... and I don't remember his exact wording, but basically it can be a bit daunting or intimidating. So, a good way to go about it is first to go into Guided Fusion, and you can see all the different personas you can make from the spell cards you currently have. And you can go in... you can go and look at the details of each persona, what skills they have, and what their stats are, their level requirement, and all that stuff. Oh, and the SP cost, always important. So from there, you can jot down, like, just write down all the personas you're interested in making then write down all the possible recipes for them. Once you've got your list put together, you can go into Manual Fusion and uh, just try combining, or take a look at this chart and see how each of those spell cards actually combines so you can figure out what the ideal way to fuse each of your personas is using this key here. Ideally, you want blue, but gray will suffice. Try to avoid red. Circles are okay, but it's better to get the arrows because that indicates that your persona may inherit a skill from the spell cards. Having both cards the same order is obviously good, but just having them compatible can suffice. Incompatible is not recommended. So, yeah, I actually went and did that, and I have a little list here in front of me of which personas I want to make and uh, which recipes I'm going to use. It is important to look at the spell cards and their abilities, and uh, it's important which one you choose to go first, because as mentioned before, the first spell card is the one that may actually pass down skills if your persona does happen to inherit any skills. So for starters, I'm going to fuse Agatheon. I'm hoping to get Shudai Geki, because that's just awesome. Medium electric damage plus shock to an area. And I'm going to use, for the second persona, Noct Kobold. Who just has a bunch of status skills, which I'm not especially interested in. Together they will make... I'm not going to use an item. Together they will make this persona, who is best compatible with Luffy here, main character. 
Oh, and yeah, you can you can switch which character it's being compared to, even on uh, the the guided perfu uh, guided fusion screen. So having trouble keeping my train of thought today. My mind doesn't seem to be in the best shape, so this might not be the best time to be playing and recording this. But eh, kind of feel like it. So. There they are! I will. Thank you. Alright, there's a couple more personas I want to fuse real quick, like... I forgot to actually show... Oh wait, no, I did show Noct Cobalt. Never mind. So I'm gonna fuse Quicksilver here. It has a couple nice skills. Particularly interested, particularly interested in Shurai Geki, obviously. I'm going to fuse that with Leprechaun here. He also has some, a couple nice skills, but more interested in Shurai Geki. No item this time, and we'll get this persona. Pretty nice, I gotta say. Gonna need to level up a bit before I can actually use that one, though. I'm just gonna skip this. Don't know if I... It seems like if I skip that, I wouldn't find out if there was a fusion accident, which concerns me a little bit, but oh well. Just one more. Ihika. Who seems to have a number of good, like, support skills, but also a couple attack skills, so it balances out a little bit. With Ba. Magaru is nice. I like skills that target just everyone on every enemy on the field. I uh, currently have a skill like that for every party member right now, which I'm very happy about. No item for this one. This is a good support persona. Oh wait, no. Actually, it's an attack persona. Ha! <laughs> I'm thinking of a different one. Yeah, this one's all about the attacks. That'll do, though. Skip. Alright. Uh, one other thing I did, which is important. The upcoming area has some enemies from what I encountered last time I was recording this game. I got my butt kicked, especially because... Uh, the enemies in the upcoming area do fairly heavy, like, physical damage. And in particular, Nanjo's default persona is weak to physical attacks. And to make matters worse, the upcoming boss, as far as I understand, also primarily uses physical attacks. So that's not good. So I went and gave Nanjo a different persona, only I forgot that I actually went and unequipped it just so I could show you my... Uh, assuming it again. As you can see, it's already leveled up a little bit. It's level 3 currently. Just take it out of storage again. Everyone else I'm happy with the personas they currently have, so that's fine. Persona. Actually, equip that. It doesn't have completely optimum... Like, it doesn't have completely optimum compatibility with him, but that's fine, really. Uh... Oh, Personas, yeah. Oh, how do I... Oh, there we go. So yes, Mabufu. Light ice damage plus freeze to all foes. Then we've got... Oh, right. So that's what he's got. Mark's Ogun has learned Mogri. Uh, the way, like, spell names work in this game, it's like you'll get things that are applied to all the spell names. You could kind of compare it to Final Fantasy, although it's not quite the same thing, but kind of like how that you can get Fyra, Fyra, Faraga, and then most spells follow that same kind of pattern where there'll be Blizzaga, Thundaga, Kiraga. Spells in this game kind of do stuff like that, like... Ma seems to represent a spell that hits the entire enemy field. So we've got Ma Boof, Ma Gri, which is gravity spell. 
Ma Bufu. Like all ice spell. She's got Ma Bufu as well. And uh, Luffy's got Ma Garu. Like an all wind spell. I think I'm gonna do fairly well when I come to the dungeon. That makes me happy because I got my butt kicked last time. Now, before we move on, let's say we spend a little bit of time in the casino. It's a slot machine. I uh, don't have any coins, though. 